here is an amazing tool for your toolbox. It works every single time when done in faith because God always oversees His Word to perform it. That's uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. So, what exactly is this about? Some of you already know, but some of you don't, so let's go into that. There's a lot of people on the internet that say, watch this, see this miracle, that miracle. But uh, it's just AI, it's just graphics. Just manipulation of video. You are going to see a miracle if you hang around a few minutes. But you won't see it at this place. Not, not on the uh, video. The miracle you're going to see is in your own body. Now you heard me right. The miracle you're going to see is in your own body. It's not magic. It's a miracle that God himself, the creator and owner of the universe, will work in your body, in front of your eyes. If you're interested, hang around and watch. You'll see it. Easiest way I know to do this is sit in a chair that's got a back on it, as opposed to a stool. Lay back in your chair so your shoulder blades are resting against the back of the chair. So that they're flat against the back of the chair. And stretch your arms out in front of you with your palms together. Like you're clapping or praying. What I want you to do is line your wrist lines up. That wrist line is the line between your palm and your arm. You can bend your hand, you can see it. Line those two wrist lines right up on top of each other. Stretch your hands all the way out. And bring your fingers together. Like that. Now lower your hands and tilt them toward you a little bit so you can look at your finger tips. 99% of the people on the planet, their fingers are going to be a little bit longer on one of their hands than on the other, whether that's just the you know, dominant hand or the uh, genetics. But the fact is, that's the case. About 99 out of 100 people, some of the fingers on one of your hands will be slightly longer than on the other hand. And that's normal, so there's no need to get upset about that. That's the human condition. What I want you to do is line your line your wrist lines up now. Put your hands, stretch them out. Put your fingertips together. Keep your hands like that. Look at your fingertips. Watch them. Look at your fingers. I'm going to ask my best friend in heaven and earth to give you a spinal realignment up and down your spine all the way out to the tips of your fingers and all the way down to the bottoms of your of your toes a spinal realignment so your arms and legs will be the same length all the way out to your fingertips and toes father in jesus name grant whoever is watching this listening to this grant them that miracle and get their attention and i will tell them why you just did it because you've got a purpose for this Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Look at your hands. Same size. Yeah, wow. That's right. Wow's right. That kind of describes it. W-O-W, -W, world of wonder. Wow. That was from the Lord Jesus Christ to you. There may be 1% of you here that didn't see that happen. I want to tell you what you need to do. Take your hands like this and just shake them. Come on. Just shake your hands. Shake them. Check them. Now put your hands back together. <laughs> Same size. Why don't we do that? Sometimes there's a, some interference in the spirit realm with some people. And that basically gets things shaken up enough that Jesus can step in and take care of it. 
In fact, the Bible says there is uh, that Jesus could do no great miracles in his own hometown because of the lack of faith of the people. He healed some ailments, but he could do no great miracles. It takes faith. That's what this started out saying, remember? From Jeremiah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Jeremiah 1.12 God oversees his word to perform it. When you invoke the name of Jesus, that's the name that's the highest name in the universe. When you invoke that name, you get his attention. And if you're not lightly speaking his name, if you if you're lightly speaking his name and saying things like, "Oh my god," or something like that, that's not the way you want to get his attention. If you're blaspheming his name, you're bringing judgment on yourself. But if you say his name in faith, you've got his attention, and he oversees his word to perform it. Jesus is the eternal word of God. God oversees his word to perform it. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. So it's, uh, what does the Bible say his name is? Well, in the English tongue, it's Jesus. Yeshua. If you want to go to the English over the Hebrew in the Old Testament. Iosos in the Greek. That's not Jesus, by the way. Iosos is a totally different word. In fact, it wasn't originally Greek. It comes from a much older language called Sanskrit. Anyway, I don't want to digress here. What I'm trying to show you is you've just seen a miracle from God. And yes, he's still standing there right beside you. He is? Yeah, he is. The God of the universe? <laughs> yes. If there's something that you really need, make me king of one of these nations. And uh, If there's something that you really need, bad situation you're in, whether it's financial or problems with uh, the law maybe you need to ask for the salvation of one of your loved ones now's the time to ask do it what are you waiting for do it thank you father you oversee your word to perform it amen so now that your spine's realigned from your fingers to your toes, and you've seen that in your own body with your own eyes, and now that the creator of the universe is standing right beside you, yeah, he's still there. He's listening to what I'm saying to you. Anyway, you saw it. Of course you did. Your spine's been realigned right in front of your eyes. Jesus performed this miracle making your limbs the same length, symmetrical, same length. He did it to get your attention. And he's telling me to tell you something about that. Hopefully, for most of you, that did get your attention. This gift now belongs to you. To your last breath on this planet, that gift is yours. Oh, but I'm not even a Christian. Doesn't matter. I'm not saved. Doesn't matter. This is a gift that's being handed to you. Use it. Share Jesus with others through this gift. Don't shove it in a bottom drawer and forget about it. Use it. It's a gift from God. By the way, you don't get into heaven from doing works anyway so you know you can do this a thousand times won't get you into heaven you can live the best life of any man that ever walked the earth it still will not get you into heaven relative righteousness says I'm so much more righteous than the guy that lives on my right or my left are those 
scum on the street or in prison. Relative righteousness. I'm head and shoulders above all these other people. And we'll get you into heaven. What will? Jesus, I'm born of Adam. He rebelled against you. And he can only reproduce another, another human being in his own image and likeness. And because I come from that lineage, and Adam separated himself from you therefore i'm born into this that's why the bible says that through adam all men die because all men sin the sin nature is in you it's in you well how do we get rid of it it's a faith operation you understand that jesus died to replace all your insides spirit soul heart and mind That was Adam he takes all that deadness out of you and he puts himself into you this is the Holy Spirit in you he gives you his uh, heart a new heart spiritual heart gives you a new soul the Bible says we're to put on the mind of Christ he gives you the new mind and he'll heal your body you just saw that <clears throat> one example of it so this is yours to share with others and you tell them the same thing that I just told you. Why? Because Jesus wants to save you and others. Hell isn't just a long time. It's forever. Well, why would a good God throw us into hell? He doesn't. You want to point a finger? Point to Adam. He's the one that brought this on us. God didn't make this mess. He's giving you a way out right now. Take it. Call on his name. Jesus, I can see the situation I was in. I can see that my need is to call on you to be saved out of it. I'm not depending on my righteousness because I don't have any righteousness. I'm not, I'm not depending on the good works I've done because I don't have any good. I've not done any good works. I'm depending on you. Your shed blood. That's it. Nothing less. Nothing else. Your shed blood. Mary, Martha, Michael, and Joseph, great people and angels, they can't help you. Only Jesus shed his blood. Your church denomination can't help you. Only Jesus shed blood. Your works, nope. Jesus shed blood. So this gift belongs to you. You tell others when you perform this in Jesus name it'll happen how the gift belongs to them why is Jesus doing this because World War three is almost here it's going to be nuclear if you want to look for a marker like how far out is it that's a good question I can tell you how far out it is from Scripture because the Bible tells you how far out it is. You can read about that in Matthew chapter 24. You can read about that in uh, Daniel also. Jesus speaking, he says, uh, when these things are going to be happening, he says, see what the prophet Daniel has to say about it. Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 24. So what does the Bible say about when this is going to happen? quite clear there's been two temples built and destroyed the second one was destroyed at the scattering the dysphora of the Jews in 70 AD and Jesus pronounced that judgment and said that that would come and about 40 years later he'd already gone back up to, into uh, heaven about 40 years later it came and Jews were scattered all over the world. And did you know that the, the Bible says, God says, I will destroy. I think he uses the words utterly destroy. That means completely. All, not some, all of the nations where I have scattered the Jews. I'm going to destroy all of them. 
here's just a little aside for you. Even today, this is February uh, 2nd, February 2nd. Even today, there are more Jews in the United States of America than there are in all of Israel. That's true. I will destroy all the nations where I've scattered them. A L L all. This third world war is going to kill half the people on the planet. Is that in scripture? Yeah, it is. The war and the plagues that follow the war will kill half the population of the earth. It's a little over four billion people. Nations are going to disappear. They're they're going to vanish off the map. No one's going to be able to live there. It's going to be nuclear. Is that in scripture? <laughs> yeah, it is. The world's going to end pretty quick. Oh, are you kidding me? The world's going to end? Yep. Is that in the Bible? Yep. The Bible says the world's going to roll up like a scroll and vanish and disappear and be no more. Kaboom. Are you ready for it? Three and a half years after that temple's built and, and the Jews are doing their burnt offerings and their evening oblations and their animal sacrifices and so on. Three and a half years, it's going to be a seven-year covenant or treaty signed. The, the Antichrist will ratify it. Three and a half years into that, the Antichrist is going to the Holy of Holies sit himself down in there and falsely declare himself to be God and tell the world why three and a half years because he's gathering all his resources in that time and he's got them ready to go at three and a half years he's good to go he's going to tell people that you cannot buy sell or trade until you get his mark on your hand or your, your forehead and that when confronted, if you won't take his mark, he's going to cut your head off. And the rest of the nations are going to hear him say that. <clears throat> and they're going to say, you know, that, that doesn't work for me. World War Three. Here's a link. Biblical proof of World War III and the end of the world. Follow this link to read the last seven years. That's the link right there. Below, below this video that I'm making right here, right below the video, there's a gray colored oblong, rectangular oblong uh, description box. At the bottom of that box, you'll see the word more, M-O-R-E. Click on it, you'll get the drop down. And those links you'll be able to click on to get to the last seven years. It'll take you to uh, my uh, Google Cloud account, and you'll see this posted there. Now, that's not a video. It's a 101-page read. How long does it take you to read 100 pages? It's 101 pages read through it it'll answer your questions who are the key players involved when's this war going to happen when will the church be taken out of the earth uh, not the day not the hour but jesus when speaking to people about these things he said and he's speaking in the greek which is the new testament received text he's speaking uh the kone the common man's greek jesus spoke greek by the way the whole world was required to speak Greek from several hundred years earlier when Alexander commanded everyone in the world to speak Greek. He conquered the world. God the Father Almighty lined that up. He wanted a common language for all the disciples to go forth so everyone could understand. So Greek was had been the language of the day throughout the earth, the known established civilized world for a long, long time. Bible says Jesus came into the world in the fullness of times, born under the law, born of a woman, a virgin. 
came in at the right time. You've heard all roads lead to Rome? Well, God had the Romans build really good road systems. A lot of that stuff's still in place. They don't have potholes. <laughs> they build good roads. Why good roads? So the disciples can go forth in those roads throughout the, the world and proclaim the gospel. Anyway, you go to this link right here. You can uh, read about it. It's a hundred, I believe it's 101 pages. It'll answer your questions. When's the church going to be raptured? Well, Jesus speaking in what is known as the imperative or as a command says to the religious leaders, I command you to know the season. Not the day, not the hour. The season of these things. We know from Scripture that this war is going to happen before the church is taken out of the earth. We know it. Read the last seven years. It'll become blatantly, obviously apparent to you that the church will go through a third world war before Jesus takes us out of the earth. When he does, well, he's going to stop the war because, as the scripture says, if he didn't stop it, nobody would live. Everybody would die. But for the sake of the elect, he stops it. It also says that he's uh, going to take the, at that point, he's going to resurrect the dead and rapture we which are alive and remain back up into heaven. Not back up, but up into heaven. And that uh, we will be up there while Jesus is pouring out his wrath on those who are still on the earth. So who the key players are, the very few countries, and there's a handful of countries in the Bible that says the Antichrist will not rule over them. It's not very many countries, but they're listed in Scripture. You can also read about them here in this. And it says that when Jesus takes the resurrected dead and we which are alive will remain out of the earth, it says we, uh, he's not going to touch, his foot is not going to touch on the ground. He's going to catch us up in the atmosphere, if you will, in the air. Read the document. It explains how and why that happens. It's based upon... Um, a Jewish wedding feast. Read it. Then after he takes us out of the earth into heaven, the day of the Lord, which all through scripture is prophesied as always the day of his wrath, begins getting poured out upon this earth. And when he comes back the second time, his foot will touch the ground. Anyway, there's the document. Click on it, read it. It's 100 pages. Jesus ends the war. It says also, and I believe it's the 19th chapter of Revelation, that when Jesus uh, comes back, that he will destroy the destroyers of the earth. Someone said World War III, that's all oh, that's God's wrath. No, it's not. Was World War I God's wrath? Was World War II God's wrath? What about Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq? These are people killing each other. Some of these, we've already had two of them, world wars. Jesus is coming back to destroy the destroyers of his creation. He's not doing it. But he is pouring his wrath out on people that have been doing it. Anyway, that's in that document. Share this with people. Tell them only Jesus can save your soul and only through, only through our faith in him, specifically his redeeming blood. The Bible says they overcame that wicked one by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That wicked one is the devil, Satan or Satan which literally translates uh, the uh, adversary 
the enemy. By the blood of the Lamb, that's Jesus, he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the word of their testimony. I want you to think about that. People came to Jesus and said, increase our faith. And he said to them, in the Greek, it translates, it comes forth from the Greek, have the God kind of faith. Have that kind of faith. Well, what is the God kind of faith? Faith comes from hearing continually, continually, continually hearing the word of God. You're hiding the word in your heart. King David said, Lord, I've hidden your word in my heart so I won't sin against you. Jesus said, my words are spirit. Your heart is spirit. My words are spirit and they're life to those that find them. So, since we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus, and if you accept what the scripture says by faith, that it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me, lives in me, moves in me, works in me, loves in me, has his being in me, it's Christ. He's doing the works. I died with Christ. That's the faith proposition. Take a hold of it. Meditate in it. It'll begin to materialize. So what is that word of our testimony? That's Christ. Gospel of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. In Arche Heho Logos. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. The same was with him from the beginning. And the word became flesh or human. And dwelt among us. So that word in you, that's Christ in you, Christ in us, our hope of glory. Christ is testifying out of your mouth and my mouth. What's Christ testifying of? Where is he? He's inside of you. Jesus the Christ, he dwells with you. He's testifying by his word. What's he testifying of? That he has redeemed us in his blood. They overcame Satan by the blood of Jesus and the word of Jesus. That word of Jesus is in you. See how it works? So we learn to submit to Jesus and he manifests himself in us. The old Adamic nature is taken out. The nature of Christ is put in. That is the truth of how salvation works. Not a water baptism. Both Timothy and Peter say it's not the outward washing, speaking on the baptism, it's, it's not the outward washing, this is the way Peter words, words it, it's not the outward washing of the bodily filth to get you saved, it's, but it's the answer of a good conscience toward God. A good conscience. Jesus spoke of a baptism he had to go through three years after he got baptized in water. What was the baptism he said he had to go through? The cross. He referred to it as a baptism. And he said, how I am, in English verbiage, how I am bent out of shape until I get it done. He uses the word straightened, but the 600-year-old English. But that's what he was saying. And that baptism of the cross, you take up your cross and you follow Jesus and you let, you hang there crucified with him. And he works to change you from glory to glory, the Bible says. Glory to glory. You can come down off that cross anytime you want to. You can walk away anytime you want to. Someone said, you mean I would lose my salvation? Yeah, you can. No, the Bible says there's nothing that can separate me. I know. I know the Bible says that. The one thing that's not on that list is your name. Nothing else can remove you from God, but you can walk away. Oh, no, that can't happen. Why can't that happen? Do you ever sin? Are you saved? Do you sin? Oh, yeah, I sin. You just walked away from God. He didn't take your free will from you when he saved you. Abide in Christ and you'll be just fine. If some of you are concerned that, that you've lost your salvation, if you have any desire whatsoever to be right with God, you have not. 
gone too far away from him to be reconciled back to him. Just ask him, confess your sin, repent. So we cease to be the sons of Adam, and we become the sons of God. The nature of Adam's removed, the nature of God comes in. This rebirth is our salvation. So let's take a picture of this as like the rap, uh, rapture of the church there. Okay. So you can follow this link. It's a good study about the Passover wounds. It's not very long, but it's a pretty good study. Uh, what's the most accurate Bible you can use? 1611 King James Original Version. The, the new King James is corrupt. It leaves, in many places, it leaves out the words God, Lord, Christ, blood, master. Those are not words you should be leaving out from the original. 1,200 times, 1,200 times it leaves words, those words and other words out from the original 1611 uh, Textus Receptus, King James 1611. 1,200 times. God said if you, and they put different words in there then. It's not a good thing. Jesus said, "If you uh, if you add to to my word, I'm going to put the plagues that uh, they add to the plagues that are written in this book onto you." <laughs> and if you take from my word, I'm going to remove your name from my book of life. Listen, if he removes your name from his book of life, you're done. You're done. Here's a link about Christ the Healer. This is a really good teaching by F.F. F. Bosworth. There's only one part, and it's pretty pretty long teaching, there's only one part I don't agree with. He's talking about, um, Moses wrote Psalm 103, and Moses was uh, under the law, as were the Jews out in the wilderness there. And he's talking about uh, that men are given 70 years, 80 by reason of strength. But if you look at that psalm, Moses, the guy that wrote it, was 120 years old. So what's he saying? 70, 80 by reason of strength. Three score, and four score, 70, 80 by reason of strength. It says in that psalm that these people that are only allowed 70 or 80 years are lawbreakers, covenant breakers, not obeying God. And they are under God's wrath. Are you under God's wrath? No. Huh? You got grace going. Huh? And stop saying you only got 70, 80 years. I mean, you just don't leave your brain at the door when you come here to study the Word of God. There's people all over the world that don't know Jesus from Adam if they were standing right next to each other. That are beyond 80 years, 90 years, 100 years. So to say, nope, 70, 80 by reason of strength, that's it, you're done. So many people die before their time because they speak these death words over themselves and other people. That's the one thing I don't agree with about this study by Bosworth. But other than that, it is a great study. I've got a 15-part study on healing up there myself at my website. You might want to check out. Here's a link about Jesus the Christ. It tells about his nature. It's in 20 parts. You think, I haven't got time for that. Make time for it. You're going to spend eternity with him? You might want to know a little more about it before you go to stand before him. It goes from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Here's something some of you may not know. He appears to a lot of people in the Old Testament. It's called a Christophany. Pre-incarnate appearance. Before he took human form as a, as a man. Job knew him. Job. Yeah, it's in there. Parts 1 to 20. Abraham knew him. Had lunch with him. Made a covenant with him. 
Moses knew him. He made a covenant with Moses too. Other people. An interesting study. I don't have it posted here, but you can find it at, find it at my website about, uh, I think it's in, it's in 15 parts, about uh, Christ the Healer. Bibl it's called Biblical Healing. That's the name of it. Jesus didn't turn anybody down that asked for healing. And it goes, I go all the way through the Bible, and wherever it mentions about healing, I can only find two instances where people didn't get their healing. And those are both Old Testament, and because they really ticked God off and brought the judgment of God down on them for it. We're not under wrath. We're not under the law. Do you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Are you thinking, you know, I pray, but I just... I don't know what God wants me to do. Been near done that. This link, you'll learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Clearly. Clearly. You'll learn how to keep peace in your life by hearing His voice and doing what He instructs you to do. And follow this link to learn how to forgive others from your heart. Jesus said, if you don't forgive others from your heart, my Father in heaven will not forgive you. And he said, until you, until you forgive others, you're going to be turned, if you don't forgive others, you're going to be turned over to the tormentors. Who are the tormentors? Devils. Oh, Christians can't be troubled by devils. Well, you poor little sheltered soul. What rock are you living under? Even Paul, who wrote half the New Testament, word for word, two-thirds of the New Testament, even he says he was plagued by devils troubling him. You need to get educated on the Word of God. The Bible says, ignorance is bliss. No, it's not. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This link will teach you how to forgive from your heart, not just mentally. Okay, I forgive them. And, but it just keeps coming back on you and back on you and back on you. Okay, I said I forgive them. And it just keeps coming back. Oh, why? Because you're not forgiven from your heart. Learn how to do that. Google search my name, Gary T. Sawyer. Just put it in a Google search. You'll see several instances of my name popping up. I think the first two or three uh, are me. But I know the first two are. Uh... Put that name, put the T in there, because there's a lot of Gary Sawyers on the planet. That'll take you, uh, follow the link, click on the top one, and it'll take you to my YouTube website link. When you get there, click on the word video. That'll open the thing up. Then find the video that says witness. Witness watch it it's about a 30 minute video right below the video there's a gray color description box click on the drop down you'll find all these links at that drop down click on the one that says the last seven years it'll take you to my Google Cloud web page when you get to my Google Cloud you'll see a bunch more things listed there Scroll down till you see the last seven years. You want to know what's going to happen next, who the key players are, which countries are not going to be ruled over by the Antichrist, when's the rapture of the church going to happen in relation to World War III, stuff like that. The last seven years. It's That's not a video. It's about a 101-page read. I'll leave you with these three verses. These are all from King James. 1 Timothy 3.16, 1 John 3.16. Notice I said 1 John. That's not the verse everybody always quotes, John 3.16. This is the first epistle or letter of John. <clears throat> and Acts 
2028. What do they say? God manifested as a human. Really? That would make Jesus human? Yeah, it sure does. God died for us on the cross. God died for us on the cross? Is that in the Bible? 1 John 3.16. Well, that would make Jesus God. Yeah, it sure does. Acts 20.28. 20, God purchased us in his own blood. Who shed his blood at the cross? Jesus. Well, that would make Jesus God. Yeah. Yes, it would. So after you've read those scriptures, if you don't know that Jesus is God, you're not paying attention. Credendo virus, by believing one sees. Tell the people to put their hands together like that, lining their wrist lines up. Exercise a little bit of faith. How do I do that? Your faith is in the name of Jesus. He hears his name, he's right there. Faith precedes the miracle. And finally, Numbers, 20, uh, Numbers 14, 28. Say this to them, says the Lord, as truly as I, the Lord, as truly as I live, says the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, that's how I'm going to deal with you. That's pretty heavy. Jesus said we're going to be judged by every word we've heard as to what we did with it. And that if we will be uh, held accountable for every idle word that we have spoken. What, is, what does he mean, idle? If it didn't produce fruit in his kingdom, it's idle. I mean, every word I say in church, every word you say anywhere you are, forever and ever, as long as you're on the planet. The issues of life and death, blessing and cursing, come out of your mouth, from your heart, out of your mouth. From your heart. Three times Jesus said, from the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Be spirit-led, not of the mind. Be spirit-led, your heart will be filled with the spirit word of God. King David, again, said, I've hidden your word in my heart, Lord, so I won't sin against you. Questions or comments? Right there. Everything on my website is free. I'm not selling anything. I'm not soliciting for funds. I'm not trying to raise money. There's no GoFundMe. I'm sharing information. Jesus is trying to reach you. He's showing you miracles in front of your eyes on your own body. He's trying to reach you. Time is short. We're running out of time. This planet is going to end. Is your heart right with them? Get it right right now. Jesus, let these people confess you now. Oh, you don't feel comfortable confessing it with other people that are around? Jesus didn't feel comfortable when he hung naked on a cross for you in front of a crowd. Does it bother you that bad to confess this? Thank you, Jesus, for hanging there naked in front of all those people, bleeding to death for me. Say it. Oh, but someone's going to overhear it. So what? It's called part of your witness. They're not going to bite your head off. Say it. Jesus, I trust you. I trust you. I'm a sinner. I give my life to you. I put my hands in you, in, 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 in your hands. I plead your blood. I have no other plea, just your blood. And that's why I'm doing this, because my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, told me to. Don't confess Jesus as your Savior, unless you're confessing him as your Lord. And that word confession, the same word is called profession, or confession. We profess something, we confess it. It includes more than just your words. It's it's your thoughts, it's your words, it's your deeds, it's your actions. Only God is good. And Jesus said three times, I'm the good shepherd. And he told people, you, you've read in the Old Testament about the prophets and the Psalms, 
Uh, you think you can find eternal life in them. And they are talking about me, pointing to himself. I've come to fulfill that, not do away with it, fulfill it. How did he fulfill it? How did he fulfill it? When he hung on that cross bearing all of our sin, giving up his lifeblood as an offering for them, for the Father, the Father said, all right, justice is satisfied here. As many as put their faith in this blood offering, they can come into my house. Confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, not just your Savior. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord God. Lord and Savior. I've got a few other interesting studies up there, some of which I've made and some I've put of others at my website. I hope you'll check them out. There's a good teaching there about people who want to get the assurance of the salvation of their children. In fact, I believe that's what I named it. Salvation of your children, I think it's, yeah. So, I hope to see you on the other side. Until then, you want to converse? Go to textgts at yahoo.com. I read all my emails. God bless.